save my chocolate covered almonds, not raisins, because chocolate covered raisins are gross. I missed you. Moving is hard and crazy, but we're settling in to normal or at least our version of it. For example, Caspian is flitting about and messing with all my makeup and watching Disney's Hercules, which at least he's got awesome taste because that movie is dope. But look, ah, new setup, Christmas Eunice. She's got a new friend on there, an ornament that I actually don't think you can see. His name's Ferdinand. I'll give you a proper no. introduction in my next favorites video. What's up? Yes. Ah, let's not use a lash curler on my expensive brushes. Just a thought. Anyway, now that we're back, I thought I would just dive right in with the next installment of Why Come No One Told Me That. And today we're going to be talking about how to apply foundation so perfectly, fully. All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's just cut right to when I didn't have makeup on my face. Okay, so first of all, the actual act of putting foundation on your face is super easy in and of itself. It's really all of the things that you need to understand and all of the steps leading up to that. They get people mixed up and having a hard time getting really flawless foundation results. So it's super important to watch the videos in this series leading up to this one, specifically the ones on basic skincare, um, knowing your skin type, skin prep, and then there's a couple on base matching and those are gonna set you up for success. But I'll give just like some quick recaps and then I'm gonna give you just a few tips for the actual putting foundation on process which like I said is very easy and then the video will be over. <laughs> It'll be the end. Before we get started there's also three things to sort of just like be marinating in your mind grapes um, that I feel like come up in a few different areas when it comes to foundation and so I just wanted to bring those up right out the gate. Um, the first one is that makeup has an Achilles heel and that is texture. It's really hard to conceal actual texture issues with makeup. So take care of what you can with skincare. And uh, I know that's kind of a frustrating thing to hear if you're like, I'm trying to take care of it. But I promise that with proper skincare, you can, you know, fix whatever issues you're, you're having. Basically, there's no replacement for proper skincare. So just keep that in mind and set your expectations reasonably. The next thing to be conscious of as we're kind of going through these little tidbits of info about foundation is that it's really important to maintain a balance of oil or moisture on the skin. So this comes up in your skincare, in the way you prep your skin, and then also in which foundation formulas you choose. Basically, if you have drier skin, then you're gonna wanna use more hydrating moisturizers and foundation formulas. And if you have oilier skin, then you're gonna wanna use less hydrating moisturizers and foundations. So for example, on the extreme ends of the spectrum, if you have super oily skin, then you might be happiest with like a lightweight gel moisturizer and a powder foundation. And if you have super dry skin, then you might wanna use like really emollient creams and like a serum foundation. And then if you're in the middle, you can kind of play the field. Ooh, sexy, <laughs> gross. And then the last thing is that we're always trying to put as little just stuff on our skin as possible. And I'll get into what that kind of means in action as we go through the steps. Okay, recap number one, basic skincare. Like I said, there's no replacement for proper skincare and the two parts of your skincare routine that are most relevant to your foundation application are exfoliation and hydration. And I really wish that I could in like the nicest and least violent way possible just like throw chemical exfoliants at everybody in the world's face because they make such a huge difference I, like i i swear to you i have no way of proving this but i don't think there's any like actress or celebrity that doesn't use a chemical exfoliant in their skincare routine like they're just really amazing breakthroughs in skincare science and they make such a difference in the texture of your skin and how your makeup applies. I got a question the other day about what am I supposed to do with applying makeup over dry patches? There's got to be a way to do this. It's 2017 and I can give you the tools to kind of like get the most success in that situation but realistically you you want to you can't perfectly conceal like a dry flaky patch. You really just need to slough it off and chemical exfoliants or def the way to do that. And moisturize, even if you have oily skin, it's crucial for your foundation application that you have a nice smooth and hydrated base to put your base on. Okay, next thing, skin prep. This has some bleed over with skincare. I'm gonna just show you how I prep my skin right now. Um, I already have a sunscreen slash moisturizer on that I put on this morning, 
but it is winter time and my skin is pretty dry, so I'm going to use a little bit of a facial oil to make sure that I am sufficiently hydrated. Just gonna warm that up in my hands and then press it into my face, do a little face massage. Okay, while that soaks in, I'm gonna tell you more things. This is one of the areas where we're gonna think about not putting too much stuff on our faces. So uh, for example, I really only like to use silicone primers like a very small percentage of the time because I think it's kind of just like a wasteful thing to just like, why do we need it? If you hydrate and moisturize and exfoliate, then it shouldn't super be necessary. The only times I use them are when there is like a kind of severe texture issue that hasn't been addressed with skincare. And in that situation, the only one that I personally have found that I like is the Hourglass Primer. And that is because even though it's a silicone primer, it's still super thin. And so I will kind of like dab that into, um, those areas in extreme situations. The only other prepping step that I do besides just moisturizing immediately before putting on my foundation or my client's foundation is using a floral mist like rose water or something like that, typically with a little bit of glycerin in it. And that's just because I'm always trying to just sneak in more moisture and it's a good way to do that without having to actually, hello Caspian, are you coming to join us? Mommy. You want to sit with mommy? Okay. Um, it's a good way to do that without having to add like a big layer. Hi. 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 Mm. Oh, Mr. Snugs, I love you. Do you want to go watch your show? Nope. Nope? But it's Hercules. It's so good. It's that. It's foundation. I'm going to teach him how to put on foundation. Why don't you go sit over there? Anyway, so I'm just going to mist my face. I want two treats. You want two treats? I do one. Oh, you're so crazy. Okay, now that my skin is primed and ready to go, I have chosen a foundation formula that is suitable for my skin type and my needs. My skin is a little bit on the dry side, so I'm using the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation, which is actually a pretty good foundation for most people. What? You need some water? You need some water? Excuse me, sir. There you go. I also picked this foundation because it has a coverage level that is appropriate for my needs at this time. It has a nice medium coverage and obviously I've got some stuff going on so I'm skipping tinted moisturizer because I just have like some general blotchiness and I feel like I'm gonna be more efficient with medium coverage. And choosing the coverage level of your product is like one of the really big areas where we're thinking about not putting too much stuff on our face because I would always rather use a fuller coverage product that I don't have to use as much of as opposed to using a lower coverage product that I have to build. So, you know, sometimes people say like, oh, it's medium buildable coverage. Well, I don't really wanna build stuff on my face. I wanna work in nice, thin layers so that my face or my client's faces can have the ability to move without it getting creasy and crackly and gross and just like feel more comfortable. I'm big on the way makeup feels, not just the way it looks. And I also really wish that every person at home had the opportunity to see celebrities and YouTubers in person so that they could really get a grasp for what a really full coverage makeup looks like because it, it might look flawless on your phone or on your computer screen, but in person, there's really no way around um, like thick layers of makeup looking like thick layers of makeup. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people genuinely prefer to look super done up and that's fine if that's what makes you happy. My experience has just been that most of my clients um, want kind of a more natural look, when it, at least when it comes to their base. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to teach you. So circling back, what I'm actually talking about. That's why I'm using a medium coverage foundation because I'm not gonna have to use very much of it. It's also the reason why I'm not using a full coverage foundation for these different areas because in that situation, like where it's like, I really need to conceal, I'm gonna use concealer because concealer is basically foundation that just has way more pigment in it. And so again, I don't wanna put a full coverage foundation for like most of my face where I don't really need that. I would rather medium coverage to even out the blotchiness and take care of a lot of these spots. You need some water again? Wow. Thank you, mommy. You're welcome. All right, now let's play that game where I try to remember what I was talking about before Caspian interrupted me, AKA the game of life. Oh yeah, so I'm just going to use like a full coverage concealer in the tiny little spots where I need it and thus avoid a full coverage foundation on more of my face. I'm probably being really repetitive. I just really want you guys to get this information. Basically, it's all about being tricksy and making people think that you don't have full coverage makeup everywhere. So only use fuller coverage where you need to. So you only need a little bit and then only put the fullest coverage in the places where you really need it so that then you can have like just regular skin showing through in lots of places. And people are like, oh look, she doesn't have makeup on. Her face just looks so beautiful, like a baby's butt, what a weird phrase. Okay, and last thing before I actually put stuff on my face, 
Uh, my skin is in like the light medium category and it falls somewhere in the valley between Yay. neutral and olive slash yellow tone. So I have chosen an appropriate base color, which there are multiple videos on that process in the description box. I put all the videos in the description box, by the way, that I have referenced. And now I'm going to use a damp beauty blender because my favorite tools to use are damp beauty blenders or fingers. And just for convenience sake, I usually use a damp beauty blender because it's faster because a beauty blender sponge is bigger than my finger. Science. So there's two main things to think about when it comes to the actual act of application. <laughs> Alliteration, fun English nerd times. And those two things are you want to dab on the areas where you have texture issues or you want to build coverage and you want to sweep on the areas where you don't have texture issues or you want a sheerer finish. And the other thing is that there's no rule that says you have to put foundation on your whole face. So I like to... You want to put your pen behind your ear? Yeah. Yeah, you do look very professional when you do that's, that, I understand. This is too big. Oh, that pen's too big to do that? Yeah. What a bummer. Oh, tiny one. You want a tiny pen so you can put it behind your tiny ear? You're very funny. So I like to start by applying makeup to the areas that have the most discoloration. Usually that's going to be around the center of the face and dab and then feather out and sweep and blend in the other areas and then just like not even put foundation where I don't need it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just dabbing, dab, 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 dabbing. And without putting any more on, I'm kind of just like blending out now, doing a little sweep, a little dab and sweep. It's like the new bend and snap. Do a little more dab. Another thing to think about is you want to avoid putting thick layers of makeup, uh, especially around your hairline, the perimeter of your face, because it looks very apparent there. All right, and that is how I would apply foundation to my face or one of my client's faces. Like I said, any of these areas that need additional concealing, I will use actual concealer for. And spoiler alert, the next edition of this series is going to be on covering acne, and that's gonna be coming out in actually just a few days. So I will cover that in the next video. And now I'm just gonna put the rest of my makeup on my face, and I'll be back in a second. <laughs> you put no makeup? Yeah. Oh, wow, that looks nice. <laughs> As usual, I hope that this was helpful and that you gained just many nuggets of life-changing information. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and dislike it if you did not like it. And follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Kiki G Makeup. Huh? 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 What? Huh? And oh yeah, subscribe to this channel or else you will have to fight a Balrog to the death. And I understand that Gandalf that actually worked out really well for him because he like turned from Gandalf the gray into Gandalf the white But I feel like the odds are that that probably won't happen to other people in that situation Like you probably if you fought a Balrog you would just fall off the mountain and then die and just be dead and not turn into like a more powerful wizard version of yourself ah. So what I'm trying to say is you should subscribe to avoid that uh, certain almost certain death Hi Mary Hi, baby. All right, we will see you guys in a couple of days. Goodbye. Bye.